Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Hey, we have, some, we have some water for you. Yeah, being ready. Yeah. Who's doing what, Tom? Uh, I was going to introduce you. You started. All right. You started. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Oh, that's all right. I'd rather stay here. I'll let him stay there. Yeah. On behalf of the Montague County Commissioners, Commission President Sean Secor, Commissioner Jeff Arnett, and myself, we would like to welcome everyone to this informative meeting. As you look around the room, one can see that we have a diverse and eclectic group of individuals, from mayors to county commissioners to city managers to superintendents of schools. We also have numerous business leaders, CEO and president of the Morgantown Area Partnership, managing member of MRAL, owners of the Morgantown Industrial Park, president and CEO of Mountaineer Country CVB, representative of First Energy, and our good friend who's standing up here, our state auditor, J.V. McCuskey, who's going to be watching over us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we are here today to listen to our Senator, the Honorable Joe Ranchin, to explain in greater detail and discuss the American Rescue Plan, how it will affect the future of our three counties and what it will mean to our school system and our cities. The American Rescue Plan releases the money directly to the municipalities and the counties, creating a rare opportunity for local leaders to be the decision makers. This is the first time ever that we've had funds that the community can make their own decisions on. We do not have to go to Charleston. We do not have to go to the federal government. But we do need to follow the guidelines. The stimulus money is now here. We now need to work together and figure out how to use those funds in the best way possible. It also opens the door for possibly combining these funds, cities and counties, to consider a mutual project that is beneficial to all the governmental bodies. My relationship with Senator Manchin goes back to the mid-1980s, when I was the local vice president of the Teachers Association. He made a promise to me back then. He said he would always listen to me, he would always be available for meetings, and he would always bring and work to bring the funds to our localities. It's 35 years later, and he continues to keep his promise to our community. Perseverance. One <laughs> <laughs> <Or> more. Okay. <laughs> These federal funds could never have happened without the leadership and the direct involvement of our Senator Joe Manchin. Please join me with a warm welcome, our Senator Joe Manchin. Thank you. Well, let me just say to Tom, my friend Tom Bloom, to Sean Secor, to all of you, all of you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm pleased, I really am pleased, and it's been wonderful to work with J.B. McCuskey, our auditor. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a good uh, team here that we put together, his team and our teams working together from the federal level to the state level to making sure that what we do, we do it the right way. I, I truly intend and I know JB feels the same way I do, that West Virginia should be the model for the United States. We should be the model because the naysayers have been saying, oh no, if you give this money to the counties, if you give it to the municipalities, they're going to throw it away, they'll waste it, there'll be fraud, there'll be all this going on. I said, no, wait a minute. They're elected officials. They take the same oath of office I take. I don't believe that whatsoever. And I know that you all will do it and do it right, and JB is going to make sure you do it and do it right. And he's going to help us. We're here to help. We're not here to basically penalize anybody. It's to help them. When you think about 2,700 West Virginians who've lost their lives, when this thing first started, nobody knew about well, this is a pandemic. Nobody heard of COVID-19. We didn't know what we were dealing with. And I'm sure that even back when President Trump was saying, it'll be over, it's going to go away, he probably really believed that because we just didn't know. But when you listen to the scientists and you listen to basically the people that should know and do know, it's turned out to be something as drastic and horrible as it could ever be. 
550,000 Americans have lost their lives. 2,700 West Virginians, and probably all of us in this room know someone who's either contracted COVID or have died from COVID. It's a horrible, horrible situation. Make no, no mistake about it, what we have is we have a, we have a health crisis and we were trying to keep it from turning into an economic crisis. There's been a lot of money spent, a lot of money been distributed, and we've been able to keep the economy afloat as bad as it's been. Businesses, there's been a lot of businesses have been harmed. There's been a lot of people that lost their jobs, businesses had to close, no fault of their own. They were directed by the federal government to shut down or by the state government. I understand all of that, and that's no fault. We had to step in and do something, and we did. Last year, we had five different pieces of legislation. Uh, and with the 1.9 that we just passed, this recovery act that we have, that's almost $7 trillion we put in the market. When you think about the, the budget for the United States of America on an annual basis is in the $4 trillion range, we've almost doubled that within one year on top of the $4 trillion. It's unbelievable. Now, people have said, this is too much money. You're spending too much and throwing too much money at this right now. If we did it in one year, they'd be right. And that's what we were able to change. If they did it in one year, we would over, uh, Glenn, we'd probably over, over charge the market, if you would. We would have, basically, because there would have been more, we'd have had more money going out and more demand for products because you had more money going, than would have been able to fulfill that. That would have made all the prices go up, inflation would have gone up, interest rates would have gone up to try to calm that down. That we knew. What we did with this bill, unlike anything else we've ever done, you've got four years now. You got till 2024, the end of 2024, to spend this money. So there's no, oh, I got to do it right now. We got to do this. If we don't spend it by this end of the year, we're going to lose it. Tom, you guys don't have to do that, Sean. It's, it's different, you. completely different than what we've ever done before. And you get it in two tranches. So we don't throw all the money at one time. I always said, compared to throwing a whole lo a load of hay on, on the horse at one time and it found it, <laughs> we're not doing that. So basically, you're going to get half of whatever your allotments are, and you can see everything here. We're going to, I understand, we're going to leave those with you so every county can take them back home with you to your county office. Um, so I think that basically what we did, when you look at all the things, the small business aid, the broadband, uh, it goes on and on. You have the local uh, $677 million is going to go out to 55 counties and for, uh, to local governments and counties and cities and states. The state gets 1.25 again. Think of this. In one year, the state's got two and a half billion dollars from the federal government. The budget, which JB has corrected me on, because I'm thinking about when I was there, but he's telling me it's closer to five, five billion dollars now. The budget, you got half of the budget almost given to you by the federal government on top of that. And then you have vaccines, another 11 million, education, 800 million. There shouldn't be a school in West Virginia that doesn't have proper ventilation and handling systems to make it safer and cleaner for the kids. Not one. And then you have on top of that child care, $260 million. The biggest reason people can't go back to work, a lot of people can't get back in the workforce is because schools aren't in, they can't get the kids to be taken care of. I understand that. And we put that in there. So we have seniors got nine million more housing, transportation, veterans, hospitals, and rural health, $8 billion for our healthcare uh, industry. A lot of good things here, behavioral health, food assistance, firefighters, first responders, you name it, I don't think we missed it but we did it over a rational period of time rather than just jamming it at one time. So, Montgomery County, 20 million, 20 and a half million dollars. Montgomery County, Blacksville, 70,000. Uh, I, I told him, I said, you have Granville, 1.3 million, Morgantown, 10.6 million, uh, Star City, 810,000, Westover, 1.7. In Marion County, 10.8 million dollars, Berrickville and all these little communities. Farmington, 150,000. I'm from Farmington. We've never seen $150,000. <laughs> the town is going, they, they're, they're just ecstatic, okay? But when you think about it, when's a lot, and in my lifetime, it's never happened. I don't think in history I've ever read to where we, the federal government sent money that came right directly through. How this will be dispersed, the counties will get your money from the federal treasury. The CBDG, the larger communities, we have, how many do we have in the state of West Virginia, CBDG? Huh? 10 or 11 cities that will get their money directly from the treasury. The rest of the smaller communities, incorporating, will get theirs through, is your office? It'll come through JB, but it's a pass-through. There's no catches anywhere, there's nothing, it's just basically within 30 days, he passes it right through to you. 
because it was a better way for us to get the money out rather than coming the treasury to all the little communities. So all of that is something that, that uh, we're going. Preston County got 6.48 million. Albright 120, Brandonville 40, Brewston Mills 30, Kingwood 127, Masontown 220, Newburgh, all the way down to Tunnelton 120,000. Rollsburg got 240, Terra Alta 620, and Reedsville 250. I'm just uh, in, these, in these turbulent times right now, and rather than picking sides of who's for this and who voted for this and who didn't vote for it, there was reasons, everyone had reasons to be against something or to be for something. The bottom line, what we try to do, I took a lot of input from my Republican colleagues and friends and tried to put things into the bill that I had an opportunity to do, which I think it proved out. This was one of them. How do we pick water and sewer and internet? First of all, they didn't want to do any, they didn't want that money to go uh, for anything except for COVID expenses. I said, we don't have that much COVID expenses that we'll be able to use this money for that. We just don't have those expenses. You don't have them in any town, city, or county. Just doesn't, they're not there. What we have is an interruption and a disruption of the way the normal life should have been. I'm gonna use, I'll use um, volunteer fire apartments as the best example to use. I look at volunteer fire departments this way because 75% of our uh, firefighting is done with volunteers in the state of West Virginia. I think it's about that, it's still about the same. With that being said, if, if I asked the volunteer fire department, I said, what, what, was your, what did you operate on in 2018 and 2019? And they gave me their operating budgets for 2018 and 2019 and how they raised their money. I said, what happened in 2020? And they said, well, we couldn't raise money because we didn't have bingo, we didn't have this, we didn't have that, so we lost a lot of revenue. That, is an, that to me is a legitimate expense to help volunteer fire departments stay alive. If not, they're going to die on you. So these are the things we're working on. We haven't gotten the guidelines yet, but when we get that cleared up, then JB will come and explain to you how he plans to implement that. These are things that we're trying to do that makes common sense, but in this very, very um, uh, challenging times. Guys, we've, let, we've allowed in this country uh, for politics to divide us rather than unite us. And that's not who we are. It's never who we were, have been in West Virginia. And uh, I like to tell them we're a little bit different. Uh, we're not the Washington Democrats. We're not the Washington Republicans. We're West Virginians, Republicans and Democrats, and we should work together. We always have in the past. We can again. And that's why it's so, it's, it's so rewarding to work with J.B. and his staff because they're truly professionals, care about the state. It's something that we're going to do our jobs and then basically combine to make sure it's done and done right. And again, for those naysayers who said, oh, no, we shouldn't give you all money. You shouldn't have control of uh, $2 million. You shouldn't have control of $20 million or $10 million. Well, you took the same oath I took. All of the office holders took the same oath. We're all taken. I believe that people wouldn't have liked you. They didn't think you could do the job, and I know you can. And again, we want to be the model. So with that, we're going to work very, very, very diligently, very closely with you. The guidelines that they're based on the timetable, I think within 30 to 60 days, you're going to see everything unfold. You'll be getting checks. And then basically the guidelines should come out before the checks. If there's something in those guidelines that you think is, is gray, then before you do it, check with JB or my office or both of us together and let us get a clearing for you. It might be something you're very legitimate what you're asking that might not be spelled out clearly in the guidelines that we might be able to go back to the federal treasury and ask for a clearance or a waiver to see if we can do something and, and give you some flexibility. But right now, it's pretty much any COVID expenses is very easy. Anything you can show that COVID reduced your income or you lost first responders, firemen, policemen, 911 operators, first responders as far as on, on your uh, ambulances and things of that sort, that's never intended to do. You should have never lost a person there. And if you incur basically a lack of revenue and try to keep all that up, that should be reverse, reimbursable. I don't know, I can't speak on how, you, how well you were able to recover your money from the first $1.25 billion that the governor received. I, I don't know where you all stand on that, if all of you are, in, and JB can go into that in more detail. Um, so if there's still some money, uh, we had this question asked us before, if there's still some money that you think was owed from legitimate expenses you had from the previous bill, and you want to carry it over and see if you can pay for it from the new bill, that we've got to clear. I, I don't know, I don't have an answer for you on that. But we're going to clear, That's, that was asked to us before. So with that, without further ado, I, I want to bring JB up. Uh, he, 
he truly has the expertise and he has the people and the uh, and the office but more importantly he has the commitment to make sure we do it better than anybody in the country so with that jb mccaskey thank you senator uh so like the senator said i'd I really like to to thank you for for letting us be a part of this it, it's one of these things where if we did let sort of the politics of the time yeah dictate our relationship, it would be very difficult for us to do this properly, and it's going to be. Uh, and that's a real testament to you guys and your staff, and, and we truly appreciate it. Um, so from our office's standpoint, um, there, there's three things that we're going to make sure happen, that this money gets spent legally, that it gets spent transparently, and that it gets spent effectively. You know, we, we talk about broadband a lot. Uh, it's hard to build a house in a place where you can't flush your toilet. And you can't build a business in a place where it floods every time it rains. And so we have a lot of real basic infrastructure that needs to be built. But the reason that we have set this up regionally is that the needs of, of the commission here are very different than the needs of cities in Boone and Logan and Lincoln and Wayne. And their needs are very different than, uh, you know, Berkeley County and their needs are very different than, than Ohio County. And so the whole goal here will be to allow you all the confidence to spend this money the way that you think will make your region, your city, your county the best place it can possibly be <laughs> moving forward, but also <laughs> providing a level of transparency so that the people of West Virginia can hold all of us accountable. At the end of the day, it's money coming from the government, but it's coming out of every single person's pocket, right? And so it is going to be our job to make sure that people know how this money was being spent. And that particular goal has twofold. The other part of that is we're going to be the only place in this country that's going to be able to go to the federal government in five years and say, this is what we built. You gave us this money, and here's what we got for it. And this is why we maybe need more. Or this is why this program worked. This is what the infrastructure bill should stay. Data is the most important commodity in all of governing. And we will be collecting the best set of real-time data on how this money is being spent of any other place in this country. I am certain of that. And that will give us the confidence to spend it right, and it will give our citizens the confidence that it was spent right. And to me, that's the most important. And it's very fitting that we're here. Um, Monongalia County is, uh, was our first and is our, our best ambassador for our office's transparency program. They really stuck their necks out at the very beginning of this program and, and have caused many people to follow suit. And why that's important is the infrastructure that our office has built over the last four years. Uh, while it seemed uh, it was very important then, it is massively important now. And I think what we've learned is that if something's a good idea when there isn't a catastrophe and it's a better idea when it is one, uh, that you were probably doing it right in the first place. And so we really appreciate you guys. And, and uh, the senator and I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you all have. Absolutely. Let me just say this. Once you see the boards up here, if you want to take a picture on your, uh, before we leave, take a picture of this. Basically, it tells you how the money is going to be coming in. Direct aid, small business, broadband, boom, 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 boom. Okay. And then you can call us and say, hey, Joe, check on that. I think, is it on your, is it there? Okay, okay, you already have it. You know, the handouts you all receive, please take them, and if they need any more, let us know. Anybody have any questions whatsoever on anything that you might have heard or what you're concerned about? And before I go into questions, okay, before I get there, I want to introduce my staff, and I know JB wants to introduce his staff with him. I have Ryan Thorne back here, hands law of economic development for me. We have Andrew Robinson back there. Andrew just come on board to help with this specifically. It's his first and foremost thing that he's going to be doing, coordinating with JB's office and, and his people in his office. Ben Spurlock back there is my regional rep, does a great job. And also we got Marcus, Marcus uh, Constantino back there, and Marcus makes sure that I don't say the wrong things. So with that, he has, to, he has my staff needs more than a camera to keep me from saying the wrong stuff. He has a lot more. He has a lot more work to do. <laughs> a whole lot more Go than a camera. That's yours. why they're carrying a bat. Um, so <laughs> Anthony Woods is is here, and Anthony is. Uh, I would tell you to call Anthony, but I need his phone available because I got to call Anthony when I when I have a problem. And then Patsy Trecos is a county commissioner in Harrison County, and he just came on board with our office to sort of be our uh, liaison between local governments and our, and our uh, office. So what he's going to do is work with the senator and work with us to make sure that when the guidelines change, you know what they are, and that when the plan is implemented, you know how it works and how all the technology works. Um, like I said before, this is really a joint effort, and, and our teams are, are, are ready to go. Thank you. Uh, my name is Savannah Courtley. I'm a civil and environmental consultant. So my question is really about the infrastructure portion of it. The water and wastewater, the, the dollars that are dispersed will be Will they have to be shovel-ready projects? No. Let me start with this real quick. Yeah, so, so you brought up an interesting word. 
So one of the things that the senator and I are trying very, very hard to avoid, and, and, and you said consultant, and you mean it in a very different way than I'm getting ready yeah, to describe right. it. But our office has been involved in multiple federal funded projects after disasters in the last four years. And one of the biggest problems we find is that lawyers come in from all over the place and they descend upon these little towns and they say, for 10% of your grant award, we'll figure out the paperwork for you. That isn't what's happening this time. That is what these guys and these guys are for. So if you have a question, don't pay somebody from out of state 10% of your money to answer it for you. Ask us. We're your consultants. On the other side, I, I think what the shovel-ready versus <laughs> what you're talking about is, is a design build or a... I, my, I don't think there's going to be a line. It would be very difficult for me to imagine them having that here, level of expertise here, to even write that into the bill. Yeah, but, here's, here's the thing that, that, that we would envision. First of all, I've talked to the, to the governor, and my suggestion would be basically is put a Blue Ribbon Commission together to probably help coordinate this. Because there's going to be projects that a, that a municipality has needed and wanted to do for a long time, and even though they're going to get something that they didn't expect, it won't be enough, probably. So with that being said, but that's maybe their number one project, and everyone agrees on that's the number one project. Then they go to the county and say, okay, Tom, can you help us a little bit? We're, gonna, we're using all we've got, and we've got to get over this hump. And Tom's going to say, hey, Sean says, I think it's pretty good. Okay, yeah. Okay, and then they're going to say, but we need a little bit of help too. So we'll go to the state, because the state's got money. So if, if, if we're far-sighted on this and not near-sighted, what, what can I spend mine on? But what can I do something and get help to do it and finish a project? You've got four years to do it. But the biggest projects that we have in water and sewer is separating water and sewer. <laughs> That's the biggest problem all over the country. The average water line is over 80 years old. The average water line in America is over 80. Now, who told me, who, who was the one who told me they had one water line that was 200 years old? Someone was telling me that in one of the town halls we were at in Wheeling, I think. Wheeling being a very old city. So basically, we have a lot of infrastructure. How did I pick water and sewer? <laughs> well, first of all, they didn't want to, I told you they didn't want to use anything, no infrastructure, because they wanted to save it for this new big infrastructure bill. And I said, well, they're not going to be able to spend that money, and they're going to have to be return it all back. It looks good, but you can't spend it because the guidelines have been so narrow. And I said, guys, come on. We all have infrastructure problems. So I said, just go with me halfway. We'll take roads and bridges out and use that for the big, for the big infrastructure bill. But you very seldom see any of us going and, and cutting a ribbon when there's a sewer line down there and say, boy, look at that beautiful sewer line. <laughs> it's something we don't do a lot of. We should, but we don't. Or a water line that's been buried for 100 years. I bet you we do now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what. So I said, listen, pick something that we know that needs to be done it's been abused and basically it's out of sight, out of mind. That's how we got water and sewer. Now, how far does water and sewer go? We got people wanting to separate? Fine. Okay, I got other water projects. Anything that has water in it that has to do with water, okay? But most of them think, as JB said, potable water. People that have potable water, it's a shame. And the southern coal fields, you would think with all the wealth that came out of the southern coal fields, that we would at least have just the clean drinking water and be able to flush a toilet, no, it wouldn't go in the creek. Those types of things. So we're m making up for a lot of time that's been lost. Well, and, and we're working with the regional development authorities as well. Um, and, and your question, again, is a very good one. You know, water lines don't understand the lines between cities and counties and counties and counties, right? And so the idea here is, is a $100 million project is going to do a lot more good than $100 million projects. Sure. And, and it's exactly right. The bigger the project in this instance, in many ways, yeah. is, is the better. The other thing is also, we don't want to put a burden on a fixed income population to where, oh, if we fix this, we have to raise your rates. Ronnie, clear to here? They can't do it. If we can help to reduce some of that pressure from some of this, what we can do now with the money coming, that would help, and especially in older areas, uh, demographics, everything that we have that sometimes can be challenging. Uh, it, it has to be taken into consideration. When you get to that gray area and you're thinking and, and you're all making decisions for your, for your towns or for your counties, and that gray area comes, boy, if we could just get this, and it's right on the fringes, but you know it might not be in that guidelines, you need to check with us. Don't go over there and think, well, it's better to, have, uh, uh, to ask for forgiveness than permission. Uh, not when you have a different uh, direction you can take, because we can get 
if it makes sense, we'll fight for a waiver to get permission. So before you do it, just, just kind of heed that, if you will. Hey, yes. Hunt, oh, hi, Sheena. How are you? <laughs> You're going to have a lot of work, Sheena. You're going to have a lot of work. How come you guys all wear yellow? All three of them have yellow shirts on today. Uh huh. I'm sorry. We're in the planning um, as areas like getting um, brownfield properties, properties that have issues with pollution that then you could bring back into reuse. Um, is that in this bill or in I, It might be. I, I don't think it's in this bill here. It could be in the new infrastructure bill. And we can make sure that we've got it. They don't understand rural America. They don't understand energy producing uh, parts of this country. They just don't understand. Yeah. They don't understand that we don't have a lot of flat land. Of, okay, we we'll just go over here and build over here. We've got to reuse what's we been have used. To reuse what we have. Yes, we yes. do. And we have to remediate that to a certain extent that it can be used and not hold the people liable because then you go, they go back and sue the person and you got, nobody wants to take that liability on. And you have a lot of uh, pieces of land that just lay dormant that aren't in productivity and should be. We're going to try to clear that up in this new energy or this new um, infrastructure bill. Yeah. This is water and sewer. If it has something to do with your water system, your sewer system, and basically things of that sort. And the, the reason I brought in the, 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 uh, uh, the dividing of your uh, storm sewers versus your uh, uh, sewage system right. is basically when all these sewage systems start going in in the 60s and 70s and 80s, we start getting in throughout the state, they basically didn't have the money or didn't think anything was wrong with them just connected to where we're collecting now and we're collecting off of the storm sewers mm -hmm. let it go into that collect it and we'll grab it and we're, we're treating twice as much what I would be looking for is what's my long-term cost what's something I could reduce my long-term cost that would be the thing you should be looking at and if we can do some of that to reduce it that would be tremendous because the burden becomes on you all and you can't pass it on sometimes and then I guess you could address broadband broadband the state of West Virginia has an extra $138 million on top of their $1.25 billion, $138 million just for internet. You all are able, and everybody else is able if you want to pick a project. But I would work with the, the federal, with the state broadband council, uh, and I understand there's a middle mouth thing they're doing with 40 counties right now, big project, $80 million. You know, there is not a reason, honest to God, by 2024 not to have everybody connected to internet in West Virginia. Not a reason at all. There's enough money being, being put to this project. And from an audit standpoint, one of the biggest problems we see is water systems. Municipal water systems, are the, the, the costs are going up. The maintenance is very, very difficult to upkeep, especially for very small towns. And so this is really a way, I think, for us to rethink the, the entire network of them and figure out better ways to give cheaper, better water to people that's a less burdensome on small governments that have a difficult time managing them in the first place. Yes, sir. We have a project in West Over West Virginia, right across the river. And this money is actually a blessing because we don't want to put the burden on the ratepayers. That's exactly what would have happened. But we have infrastructure problems. But in order to fix that, we have to tear up a main artery coming into our, our, our city. We're going to be, the money that we're getting, if we spend every dime of that, we probably won't be able to put the road back the way it should. And we depend on the state or the county to help us with that part of it. We're willing to spend every dime on that. You know what, I, that's, that's an area we have to get clarity on because if you have to get, if you have to basically remove infrastructure and replace infrastructure to get to the problem you're trying to fix, uh, that has to be, I mean, that's a cost. It makes sense to me, so I, that's a good one there. Ryan, send that to Kevin, let Kevin check with Treasury. You're asking the exact reason why this all has to be done in conjunction. Right, that's the reason why all so of this has to be done So you've got 1.74, yeah. okay? you got 1.74. Tom and Sean, all of them got ten and a half. He's got a whole county of every little to, to try to work and appease everybody. The county, to me, it looks like the county is going to be the stopgap because he's got to take care of every unincorporated and look at also all the volunteer fire departments in unincorporated areas. So, One more quick yes, sir. If we do have this place, will this money actually be able to go toward equipment to do the maintenance and maintain this once we do get it fixed because that's what happens to the infrastructure don't maintain yeah. it and take care of it. Uh -huh. it's not worth I gotta check that out too. I can't tell you that. What we can do is I can things you're asking me now if we can't get this I can work that into the uh, new infrastructure bill coming right. down. That's a big one there. 
Deferred maintenance is our biggest problem. Yep. You know, someone can build you a brand new plant. No one takes care of anything. You don't have the engineers to do it or the equipment to take care of it. Falls in disrepair in 10 or 20 years and you're back where you started from. That's the biggest problem we have. Are you find, having a hard time finding qualified people to work in the water departments or basically in the sewage systems or making these systems work? It's not rocket science. I know that. <laughs> you can train. Okay. Have you laid off anybody? During this, uh, during the, uh, during, have you, anybody had to lay off people that you would call first responders or essential workers in your counties or in your communities? We've been fortunate. That's great. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, yes, ma'am. Any recommendations on, uh, obviously we have a lot of states, uh, roadways that are maintained by the state that uh, as far as the county level, we have to If it, are you saying that so the storm water coming off is tearing the roadway and who's, okay, who's responsible? you're saying it isn't being collected properly right. and it's destroying the road yeah, but it, it, is it the state pro is it the state the state road <laughs> that would be a great question for delegate statler if it's unincorporated, it's not then Tom from the county, but then Tom, if he's going to, he's going to go to the state to see if the state can take care of the, of the problem. And I think the answer is, is we probably don't know yet. And so he, the guy... I can't put anything any simpler than that. And the other, we don't know, right? I mean, I mean, if you can't take care of the water, then you're in problems. Yeah. Yes. Ron. Uh, I just want to say thank you. We represent 39 municipalities and six county commissions through Region 6. And I just want to say thank you for the opportunity for these small towns and these communities to be able to hopefully use it for their water reserve projects. We have approximately 25 to 30 water reserve projects that run through Region 6. For all six of our counties, on their behalf, Let me say one Thank thing you. on those projects. You get the four years to do it. Everybody goes at one time. You know, the prices are going to be jacked up because there's only so much work that can be done. You don't have that many workers to do everything that needs to be done in a period of time. So you have to shop that out a little bit. Space it and shop it. That, that's it's planning proper, and that's what you can help them on that. Right, and we're seeing that already. Yeah, yeah like Ron? we're going to tag team Monongah, Katy, Farmington, those small communities. You've been in my area, haven't you? Your, yeah, 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 that makes it perfect. See, uh, and again, everything is, is so much appreciated. Uh, and you referenced uh, kind of the second two to maybe fall on the other side uh, on some additional work that I know you are doing. And this is probably a bad question, but do you have a timing on that one? Are you talking about the infrastructure bill they're talking about right now? The 2.3 trillion? <laughs> uh, we've got to come to agreement how we're going to pay for that, guys. We just can't keep throwing debt on you just can't do it. No. There's not one, one of you operate your city. You don't operate your home that way. You don't operate your town, your city, or your county. And we have states all balanced budget amendment. John J.B. is watching that all the time. So we're all in this together, okay? So we have to come to agreement. It might not be two, three. It's going to be, you know, could be one, could be one and a half, could be two. Who knows? Whatever we have the appetite for. I just want to make sure whatever we do, we get the most mileage out of it. And piggyback on what we're already doing, so it makes sense. If you can piggyback on money that's already been put out there, you can accomplish something. That's what we'll be looking for, Ron. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I do have another question. Uh, a question. Mm -hmm. Do you think any of these funds could possibly be used for maxi matching money to the local um, federal state dollars that we get for projects and those projects? I, I, I don't think that was the intent. Mm -hmm. But I can check that out because what you're saying is if there's some federal dollars that you can match to bring down in a project, a water project, that might give you the ability to complete a project. It's a very good question on that. Anthony, oh, yeah. It, yeah, and, and so I, I will say, you can probably use the money you already had set aside for that, for the matching dollars, and then use this for something else. And so from an auditing standpoint, kind of you would be, I mean, it's going to be in a different account, but you're going to have money to do something you weren't going to do anyway, so you should have more money on the other side mm -hmm. for the matching funds, would be my guess. We'll work that. <laughs>
we're, we're, I know where you're coming from, and it does make sense to me. We just got to share. We're, everything you're telling us right now, we'll, uh, Andrew's going to we'll call. We have, a, we have an attorney in, in, works for my office in Washington, and he's basically in touch with the treasurer's office. And they've been great to work with. Janet Hill and them have been great to work with. Anybody else? Well, let me just say thank you. I really appreciate it so much. I, I just, I hope it helps. You got great people to work with. People I've known forever. Tom has a question. I knew it. No, I knew it. Uh, no, actually, I was going to help you. Oh, no, okay. I'm not gonna, it's a thank you. Oh. And I think if there's a message, and I know CNN is here, and I think the message needs to be: take a look at this room. It's a cross section of America. We have union people. We have uh, owners of businesses. We have the university. We have the school system. And standing up here is a Democrat and a Republican, and you didn't even know that. And then I believe you even hire Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> and I think that's what we want to send the message on is that we now have an opportunity we've never had before. We always would say if someone comes to the project, well, I wish we'd had the money. And the Democrats and the Republicans fight over how we're going to get that money. For the first time, we have money to do the projects we've all been talking about. So let's get our act together and send the message from West Virginia to the rest of the nation is we're going to do it together. It can be done, and we really appreciate it, and we're going to prove to the country. And we want to thank the two of you because you're setting the example for us. Well, you all are going to set the example to make us all look good. Oh, doing, doing it right makes a difference and showing some. Basically, they're going to come around and see what you did with your money. Mm -hmm. Products, projects you completed, uh, how you were able to, to, to bring them all together, how the planning commissions were able to help you bring them together. There's an awful lot of things that can happen here. I'm really good. But thank you all. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You on the road, brother? Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Good day. Okay. Hey, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.